Hey, Shop Doc says welcome back. It's time for another Pontiac video. There isn't a whole lot left. Oh, and, you know, oil change. Gotta be done. They got a couple cars. So, now that we're finally ready on the Henry, and that's getting ready to go, I'm kind of getting back on here. So, one of the things you'll notice is the harness for the cruise control is now run through. Had to depin all that to do it and, and redo it. And that's under here and on. So the only things I've got left are oil pressure, um, the coolant temperature sensor, the Speedo I haven't run in yet. But i got to get that routed. That's part of my day-to-day. -day. And get that in and then I can get all of that done because I've also got to add the uh, uh, GSS stuff. Um, yeah, this is... Well, that'll get bundled. It'll no, is, be, this, is this what you had to yeah, that's in? Yeah, that's the one I had to deep oh, in. Oh, yeah, right there. Yep. And then, of course, I've got to find a ground for it, but that'll be fine. Um, then we've got, like we've had for a little while, finish the ignition to the HEI. The feedback, so this white wire is actually a feedback from the sniper, just like we did on the Henry. If we go to the sniper, and I'm assuming this is because there might be some some issues having different inputs it's not like the old days with the coil so when you're coming here there is a tack output to drive the aftermarket tack so we've got our tack input to the sniper and then the sniper gives us an output to run the dakota and that's a brown wire well it's literally right here so you know on this harness that's this brown wire so when when i'm done with this harness there will only be a couple wires on it two fan triggers even though we're not using them yet you know yet i'm just gonna kind of like how we've got you know i like to give future operability you don't know this is a stock motor now but will it be forever don't know let's plan for that so trying to leave that so we'll leave a little connector up here somewhere with our fan triggers so that in the future we can just build up the fan relays if we need to um we're really hoping that since this did work and cool, that it continues to do that. But with the AC, you know, we may have to change that to a clutch fan. We we don't know yet. We, we don't know what we don't know yet because we don't have a ton of history with this car. So, but those are all weekend bolt-on projects. Not worried about that. And do remember that we're not doing anything with this until we know the hood clears it. So we're just leaving that alone for now. Um, we can always start it without that. So I don't have a ton left on this harness. Um, hmm. Okay, here it is. I just have to set this up. The kick down harness, which is going to have a relay. And that's pretty much it. That's kind of where we're at. Um, I may add another 12 volt power point to this vehicle like I did in the Henry. Haven't decided that. It really depends on how full this connector is going to be. Um, oh, and I've got to add his fuse. So that'll be probably right in here. The fuse for the subwoofer will be right in there. You want to keep that wire as short as practical. So yeah, those are the goals of the day. Hopefully we can get that far. Hey, Shop Dog says, hey, we better tell the people what's going on. I am starting at the GSS sender and the TH400 kick down here. Getting ready to bundle their wires to go on up. The uh, thick cable from the GSS is gonna go through that grommet, but this wire here for the kick down is going to go to a relay, and we are going to take one of the outputs. Okay, not the fan ones uh oh yeah it was this ac triggered relay out uh output right here number six and we're going to use that uh, because in the software i can use throttle position sensor to to set all that i'm going to use that to trick the uh sniper into actually controlling the kick down so that'll work pretty slick i think dog's enjoying his day and these guys are down here Deciding the future of this dash pad. Yeah, unfortunately we knew it was It was rougher than we had hoped
Yeah, a little crispy wow. on the sides too. They literally just wrapped it and glued it. That's all it is. <laughs> just glue. You can see the black glue. Yeah, there too. It went into a form. Oh yeah, and then they, I'm sure they steamed it. And then boom, that cured the glue and made this all go nice. Because there's no sewing. Mm -mm. And that's nice. Because if you had to try to make a French seam line up on this, that wouldn't be very fun. Wow, well, no, it would follow. That's what I said, trying to follow that and get it perfect here. Oh, that would be terrible. That'd be hard to do. Well, not for, not for all the interior guys. But I don't think we're going to Mexico. <laughs> Another one. Well, quit breaking it. You need a form. I, I want to see where the meat spots are. That one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you guys are looking at the, the Bondo fill smooth and wrap method. I want to find all those things out now so I can be Bondoing it today rather than after I've already laid some binding them. Oh, yeah. See, this just keeps cracking. Yeah, anything. Yeah, because yeah, there's a little bit of padding here, but I think the foam is completely yeah. so worn. Here, sure. So, yeah, quit breaking it. I will break it. Okay, so I've got the GSS feed routed in now. That's that top corner. This is the actual kick down line that gets fed by this orange one. So the relay is probably actually just gonna mount right in here somewhere. Haven't decided just yet. We'll know soon. Update front. I'm slowly getting this harness pinned out. So this is the main sniper harness. They really do want you to stay with their fuse and then these will go straight to the battery. I left, this used to be the power for the fuel pump relay. I left that as just a nice tap point for future use. This is the trigger for the fuel pump relay which is now in the cab. This is the switched ignition feed which you know was this skinny wire here. And I'm getting ready to depop this because this will follow the same routing because the connectors are right next to each other so they're going to get loomed together. And then the two switched lines for the fans are just going to follow this. You know, they'll be separate, but they'll follow it. And then I just got this taped up further. I'm going to run it under where I plan to run it. Over, you know, because the connectors are way back there. And then get it all trimmed out. So once it's all cut, then I know where I can cut here and harness it all in. I don't want things too short. I do want a little service loop, but I don't want them too long either. I don't want to get stuck in things, especially exhaust. Okay. Shop dogs said that they were allowed to change the oil in the clown car. He's taking a nap. That blue blanket's there because that's where I've been laying for the last 10 minutes. But I dug those two connectors out finally. I've got this harness started and pulled around. So I'm getting ready to map out exactly where I want to cut them and splice them. Because these ends now become part of the car and still plug into the sniper with those two connectors. I just haven't figured out exactly down there where I want them to lay. I want them safe. I want them nowhere near exhaust heat. I don't want them rattling against stuff or rubbing against anything. So I want them long enough to have a service loop so I can unplug them and do stuff, but not so long that they get stuck in stuff. I'm watching you. Let's show the people where the wire is starting to fall here. So ignore these ones sticking out. I gotta loom those and get those. But now, you can kind of see how this is going to work out. I had to lay from this side. But you can see. And then just like in the Henry, I'm not leaving the ignition wire on there. No point in burning out your coil while you're testing. So now I've just got to do that relay. And then wrap and bring these wires around to right here. That's where we're at right now. So we now have... The TH400 kick down relay so that the sniper can actually run the kick down instead of using a switch on the throttle since, you know, we have a position sensor. This is that extra switch 12 volt from one of the fuses in the, in the fuse box. This is for future use for the electric fans. That's the ground triggers. This is the wires for that. Boy, they just barely make it. So we made that. That worked. And you can see back here, now next time the car is up, I will loom that fuse holder. Nothing I can do about that. That's where Holly wants it. So, yeah, this is, this is getting pretty close now. We're almost ready to build this harness, which we all know is very fun. Um, still got all these sensor wires to hook up into the Dakota. 
but if you've ever done that that's only about 20 minutes of work so I'm not too worried about that I think at this point car is gonna come back up I'm gonna get that fuse holder pulled away because I don't want that getting stuck in the linkage and we'll show Tom the uh, transmission not leaking anymore right. yeah. so this is now all routed you see it's all loomed it's all brought up all of that is we finally got that fuse tucked yeah if that fuse ever blows Kevin's got a nice fun time changing that but that's that little fuse for the sniper and you know they have that pre-done and you can see we got everything out of the steering so yeah this is this is really coming out pretty nice we're really happy so we're kind of at the I need to make battery cables part for now oh I've also got to do that fuse for the subwoofer says things are really coming along and we just decided to go ahead and cut to the chase and throw a uh, thermostatically actuated clutch fan on so he's taking this off and changing that but I'm just got the negative cables to go here and I think we're about 80% of the wiring haven't tested a lot okay. so these are temporarily mounted where I have easy access to them. They will get tucked later, but I have to adjust that one there. Now there's a, I don't even know if you guys can see it, but there's a button on there for setting for the gear. And I want to make sure I can get in there if I have to do any of those, but those do wind up much higher. But yeah, you just follow the colors. I mean, they make it pretty simple. So, I just gotta make some negative cables. And then I think we're at a point where we can start testing some things. That ought to be interesting. Okay. No, nope, you might as well live with what's gonna happen. So those are built. We just happen to have a giant two gauge ground cable line around that reach, so that's what we're using. So go with what you already got. It wasn't too bad. We've just tested all our courtesy lights, which we knew worked before. Um, standard headlights work. Let me click the. Oh, and then I gotta pull that up so we don't have a brake switch. So you can see right there, right there. So those work. Well, that won't light that up with the car off. So we're gonna go through. I'm gonna grab our little thing and we're gonna go through some subsystems and do a little subsystem test. Playing with things. And here's how nice that all looks. Holy moly, he's playing with that. Um, you know, like this light works. So turn, oh, turn. So let me turn the headlights on. Bright indicator, no bright indicator. And we're going southeast and at 66 degrees. Uh, we pro well, that's actually probably accurate, but we have not calibrated where we are because this car is headed due west <laughs> but that's <laughs> under there and has not been calibrated and we can't calibrate it in the building we got to do it outside and then we push a button then we drive in a circle and you push a button and you drive in a circle so we'll deal with that later that is really not on my list of things i'm too worried about right now we're just kind of going through do that again with the lights uh i thought i just saw this when you turn the lights off this brighten back up Kind of like it had a night mode. Oh, it kind of just went whoop. Yeah. So you'll have to play with that. I'm sure there's... Oh, yeah. It just brightened up. Yeah. Look so at that. Yeah. It's just subtle. Look. See it turn down? See it turn up? Okay. I'm going to get up so Pixie can come playing with the air ride stuff. And, uh... Yeah. Well, yeah. He hasn't adjusted any of this stuff yet. So it looks weird. But we've had to, because the car isn't running and it doesn't have an alternator, it times out. So we've had to restart the car about 100 times to get the air pressure in here. And now he's just checking his wheels because we knew the tires were getting low. Shop dog's getting flustered. But so far, the only things that I know don't seem to be working right is the brake switch, or at least the brake lights aren't on. And the wiper system switch feels weird. So when I come in here... This switch just kind of, yeah, I can feel a little detents. We never tested that system before we started. That switch may actually not be any good. But on the upside, I bet we can buy those. So three things at a time. Weird. We're doing a calibration thing for the air ride, and it keeps playing low rider. It's 
trying to figure it all out all by itself. So that's pretty neat. Okay. Well, the air ride does not like going through the full cowl without the alternator running and it keeps cycling out. So we can't play with it right now, but it's kind of neat to see it go up and down and do stuff. So we know that must work because I don't hear a bunch of hissing. Do you? It's quiet. It's very quiet. Shop dog doesn't even care. So that means it must be good. So at this point, just the wiper thing and the brake thing are the only things I know I've still got to address. And I don't think that's terrible for the first time we've put power on everything. And we actually haven't heard the starter. Yes, yes, we know the starter works. <laughs> it's real easy to accidentally turn the key further than you're expecting. And the map light works. Kevin, the map what? light works. And the map light works, look at that. That other way, pull. Like that. Uh, keys out. Oh, oh, someone turned the key off. Here. Well, the map light did work. You know how that goes. Look at that. Yeah. And we already know all the air stuff works for the heater. We tested that before, the radio stuff. We got the Dakota indicating the, the gear position. So there's things to calibrate and things to go through. But this is starting to look a lot more hopeful. And with that, I think that's where we're at. We're going to wait and see... Does this keep this weird stance? We don't know, but we'll definitely notice it. Um, I've got some troubleshooting to do. I'll deal with that next week. I will be out of town this week. So, leaving everybody behind. I've got work. So, Shop Dog says, we got a lot further in our testing than we thought we would this week. Uh, a lot of wiring done. Pretty happy with how this is all going to come out. Uh, we'll get brackets and clamps and stuff down here. I just we hit a point where we really wanted to make sure that things are going to work, charging the battery back up. Um, yeah, we got to look into the whole wiper problem. That's a different thing. Hopefully that switch. Well, actually, I think they have a switch. Remember, we have a second dash, so I think he's going to see if he's got another switch. And if he does, hopefully it's easy to reach. Oh, not that easy. Okay, yeah, yeah, the connector's on it too, bugger. But yeah, it just feels really not very clicky. It's very soft, so I wonder if it's all worn out inside. So we'll do that. And then we've got a note to remind us to put some fluids in. Uh, we've got to put the exhaust on, get no two sensor in there, get the e-brake cable stuff on. But there's a, there's a chance that if the uh, fuel pump works and stuff, even if there's a couple minor things that we still got to deal with, we might be able to get this to bark off next week. We will see. Uh, it'll be exciting if we can. And then they're putting stuff away. They had brought the brickyard car up, get an oil change, get it uh, driven around a little bit. It's been a little while. So, yeah, I guess at this point, what do we say, guys? Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.